Hi everyone, Sparks here, back for another installment of Major Minor. So last time we continued with Chapter 1 and met fascinating characters such as, such as Jade, Inumi, and some people from the Land of Terra as well for the continuation of their journey where we found out that the people from the previous episode were in fact connected to the new one. The ones were connected to some sort of plot to undermine Player and reveal what he truly is. Which is a noble goal and yes I may have fawned over the two members of the Assassin's Guild a bit too much but come on they are adorable. As is Anumi. Because, come on, the coat doesn't fit. <laughs> Anyways, we also had some fun at the arcade and learned that Jade has a bit of a fascination with other worlds. In fact, her theory makes quite a lot of sense. And as a result of actually talking to her, we're one step closer to getting the true ending. So, this time around, I hope that we'll be able to actually get through the, int the rest of the story of Chapter 1 and move on to Chapter 2. Hopefully there will be enough time for both. So, let's get straight on with that. Alright, so quickly, we'll just take a look and see how we're doing. One true flag, six total saves, one affection with Rook, and one affection with Keela. And load. Huh? Already got dark outside? So much time are we wasting in there? Oh well. Akiya Bar at night time was beautiful. It's lit up like unlike anything I've ever seen. Yeah, it looks pretty. Just, you know, from what we can see with the blur. Did you enjoy our little date? I wouldn't really call it a date. I was just joking, Rook. No need to repeat it. Now I'm embarrassed. Gila was talking about me behind my back? That's new. I made a joke and that's all it was. About you wanting to woo Jade. Sorry for doing that. It was rude. Funny. Jade wouldn't have any of that. She's far more interested in quantum mechanics. I'll let Neela Co know that this wasn't my objective. I make such as apologies, but regardless, it made me laugh. We bonded or whatever you want to call it. That is, until something came up. Something came up. I didn't want to interrupt you two. We had no idea what you may have been doing. But, I got a call. We're going to the hotel. Call? Wait, that's not so weird. Did I just hear him say that he bonded with Keela? Notice that they're both holding takeout bags. No way. They got food without me? How dare they? Those finches! I want food! <laughs> I can't explain the specifics right now, but it involves your safety. Both of you. So, I need to take you to your hotel. Yeah, it all seemed very important. We discussed it over some dinner. Without me? Damn, I'm hungry. Good news, though. We're really close. It's just a short walk away. Made sure to book a convenient location. I'll tell you a little more tomorrow. But right now, safety is priority. I take his word for it and try not to object. A lecture from Rook is not what I want right now. He starts to lead us down the street. It doesn't take much longer until we get to the hotel. Well, this is it. I hope you enjoy your stay. Your room is 217. Here are your keycards. It shouldn't be too hard to find. He hands us both our keycards. Wow, this place is massive. What kind of amenities does it have? Well, you'll each have your own beds. There's a hot tub, bed, and a shower. You'll even get your own masseuse. <gasps> Personal masseuse? Yes! Yeah, I could sure go for a massage too. This is crazy. I feel like a millionaire. I wonder who else is staying here. If this is the hotel where contest winners stay, there must be all sorts of celebrities present. I hope you two enjoy it. You have no idea how much it costs. Not too much, I hope. Be up at 9 a.m. sharp. I'll come to get you in the morning. And if it's not me, it'll be Jade. You'll get to meet more of the team. Plus, you'll experience the backstage life. There's lots of food, just so you know. Food. Yes, finally. That's all I wanted to hear. Kila excitedly runs to the hotel room doors. I decide to get Chase. I wouldn't want to get lost. Or catch up. 
Rook decides to stop. Hey, hold up a sec. Turn around and face him in the eyes. This is our first time making any real eye contact. And for a moment, I sense sadness with him. I'm sorry for being a jerk to you. I know you're thinking it in your head. Everyone else is too. I can tell. I know that I've wronged you a lot today. Even if you aren't strong enough to say so. Where is this coming from? But you know, we have a lot in common. So I feel like I can fight. This is awkward, I know, but hear me out. All of the stuff I did say, I'm joking. But apparently they're only funny to me. I end up offending or judging everyone else. That much was clear already. I hope that Jade doesn't come like this. Especially since Rook was teaching her Hume. I just wish I was understood. Half the time I have to bite my tongue. I'm scared I'll hurt people. I don't want to get hate for just talking. Half the time I'm just speaking my mind. It makes me scared in everything I say. A world where you're scared to speak. It's the only one I can say that much. That's why I use my tablet so much. I can be alone, yet with others. I bite, can bite my tongue before it's too late. It gives me a filter, if that makes sense. And you know, this wasn't always the case. He stares at me like I've done something horribly wrong. As far as I can tell, I didn't. This outburst is all on him. He pulls out his phone and starts typing on it. He's texting. I'm literally standing right here. I pull out my phone and see what he said. I used to be one of the number one hosts in Akihabara. I worked at a maid cafe. Cafe? That's right, don't laugh. I used to work at a maid cafe? That's bizarre. I stare him directly in the eye with a serious look. I want him to know that I'm handling this with respect. Now to start typing on his phone again. But I lost someone close to me. That just changes your outlook in life, you know. So he died? I wonder who that could have been. I maintain my eye contact with him. After a few moments, his eyes well up. When they died, one of the most cheerful hosts in all of Japan turned into a cynical, withdrawn jerk. So he's saying he didn't always act like this? Must have lost someone very important. I mean, to impact his personality so much. Yeah, I've seen what losing somebody important like that can do to people. It's not pretty. They're looking at him. He shuffles awkwardly as he sends the next message. I expect any of this, but it makes sense. Now anyway, I know why he hates maid cafes. It's so clear. Good thing we didn't go to one earlier today. It's so stupid. Oh. No idea how you got me to open up. But I swear, if you tell anyone else, well, that'll be the end of you. He's blaming me. So oh, that feels like an extremely rook thing to do. I hate you. He closes his eye and tilts his head upwards. Whereas he wasn't talking to me. Was he talking to himself? You just can't stop running your mouth. Even at the most inappropriate time. Just stayed a worthless hik hikikomori. What? What does that mean? Okay, I actually have to find out because I have no idea what that word means. Hikikomori. Uh. Hikikomori are reclusive adolescents or adults who withdraw from social life, often seeking extreme degrees of isolation and confinement. Jeez! He starts crying now, his eyes glistening. Not just a tear, but a veritable fountain of them. What do I say? Honestly? I like you, Rook. I to be candid with him. I tell him I like it. I mean, I know there's a good person deep inside. He just has to find them and let them out. I can tell he's having an episode of depression. Sometimes we shut out the world when we're depressed. By either isolating yourself or pushing friends away. He's clearly been trying to push us away. Wow. This is getting surprisingly deep. Oh god, is that... Yep. Wow. Thank you, Gihim. <laughs> Always sing all this time on this tablet. Mori is a Japanese term for a shut-in. They want nothing to do with society. Oftentimes, they live on junk food and surf the web. I knew his judging was a symptom of a deeper issue. I want to help him. Not see him suffer like this. He's having trouble with the loss of a loved one. We've all been there. 
Or at least, we will be. The latter is a more terrifying thought than a former, but it's something we'd all face during our lives. Rook lets out a soft smile before he continues talking. That's the last thing I expect to hear. Normally people just walk away from me. I've had someone stay and listen, let alone say something positive about me. Most people just harp on me for the tablet. They tell me I'm wasting my time, you know. Thanks for saying what you did, though. I might have taken it the wrong way, or perhaps your intent was different. But thank you. You're still very kind. I haven't smiled like this in a while. Oh. He takes a deep breath before calming down. It was also impuls impulsive of him to open up like this. Thank you for listening to me regardless. But I guess we need a few ground rules now, so listen close. Your life is on the line. Tell anyone what happened, and I will end you. <laughs> Never mention this. I have eyes and ears everywhere. Got it? There we go. Back to our regularly scheduled rook. Seems so concerned about his public image. In fact, he's willing to threaten me over it. I know they are legitimate threats, however. Aren't. Blech. Please, go and enjoy your hotel. Don't let my sob story bring you down. It certainly helped me. Venting, I mean. You know what? I kind of like you too. I admire your ability to listen to people. Think of the word, he slowly walks away. Types away on his tablet like usual. Just what is he doing on there all the time? I decided to find my way to our hotel. I was a little worried and anxious about what happened. But all my worries washed away when I entered the room. Yes! Save! Yes! Second true flag! It looks amazing on the inside. It's the biggest hotel room I've ever seen. This place is huge! If you pictured a fancy Japanese hotel, this is exactly what it'd be in, my, in your head. It even has a... Kotatsu? Kotats, Not that I'm cold or anything. At least they're prepared for it all. Kotatsu? Okay! <sighs> Kotatsu. It's a low wooden table frame covered by a futon or heavy blanket upon which a tabletop sits. Underneath is a heat source. Okay, so a heated table. That's kind of cool. Must have been checking it out while I was outside. I guess he got a little head start at everything. They already had a soak in the hot tub. It was heavenly. Can't get over how great this place is. It's top tier, that's for sure. Let's turn on the TV and see what's going on. I love weird Japanese game shows. He scurries over to the table and grabs the remote. For a moment, he looked confused. I guess the buttons on the remote are in Japanese. I see him find a big red button and press it. Sure enough, the TV turns on. It's the most thing some things in universe. So between cultures. He sits down on the floor and motions for me to join. Seems like there's a big news report going on. I see crime scene tape. Then I look at the time. Now I know what's going on. Another midnight death. The news reporter appears on the screen. He seems to strong. Maybe even scared. I'd fawn over how cute you are, but this is a very serious moment, so... Fumoto here, reporting live from Tokyo. I have some distressing news. Uh, give me a moment here. Confirming. Especially with that heterochromia. He looks off the screen for a few moments and nods. It's as if he's talking to somebody on the scene holds the microphone away from himself. Whatever he's talking about must be unsafe to hear. Sorry, it will just take a while longer. I'm sorry for interrupting your program. We'll resume as soon as this is over. He looks away from the camera again. Same direction. This woman wears a face of shock all of a sudden. It's like he's been given terrible news. Horrible. It's now being confirmed to me. Another victim of the Midnight Deaths. Their body was discovered just moments ago. He lets out an audible gulp before continuing. I'm not sure how to go about saying this, but to the heavy heart that I... Heavy heart? Oh no, this must not be an ordinary victim. <laughs> Self-off. 
taking a gulp before it continues. It's Clays, the pop idol. Recently in Tokyo, it launched its new tour, but now a victim of these senseless deaths. What? 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 Dig it! What? You made this game and you put yourself into it only to kill yourself? What? What? Ah! What? What? Ah! What is this? I am so confused. Ugh. Anyways. Moving on, let's see what's going on back on Terra, apparently. In the earlier time, in the throne room of Veliquez, the immortal king. <gasps> oh my god. My god, you are beautiful. You are like a god. In fact, I'm calling you Anubis. You are Anubis. Never mind Veliquez. Anubis. That is... That, that is you. There's History repeats itself. At least that's what they say, right? We make our mistakes and learn from them. I cannot say, my lord. I am barely mortal. I live a short life with many mistakes. I'll be gone before history can repeat. You, you have the wisdom of millennia. Something I am not lucky enough to hold. Were it a statement, I would agree. But you posed a question. And one I have no right to answer. There is no need to apologize. I was simply thinking aloud. Though it may relate to Player somewhat. He's gaining quite the following. Rightly so. He has the charisma. I'd have to bend anyone to his will. Even if the cause is as foolish as his. Yes, what a foolish cause it is. Last time someone sought severance, well, the only thing severed was their head. It's a costly and dangerous desire. Just a joke, of course. Though, I forget about your career. I'll try not to joke about assassination. How is your prodigy coming along? You mean Conrad? He is conflicted. Sometimes he thinks our methods are harsh. Perhaps he might even think they are wrong. But I was the same. I would give it time, my lord. You will become someone of great importance. Very well. I trust in both of you. You will expose Lord Pelair quite swiftly, and so my reign will go unhindered. Of course, my lord. But Pelair is not the topic of today. There is a matter of much greater importance. Is something wrong, my lord? No, it's the opposite, in fact. My opening of Terra to immigrants. It was for a very specific reason. There are those who would disagree with me, and I would as well, if I were unaware. The truth of this matter is quite secretive. Truth? You aren't doing this for charity? It's a welcome side effect, to be honest. But my intent wasn't to take in so many. I only sought the arrival of one person. The savior. The savior? Yes. I opened up orders solely for them. But so far, they have not come. And what might be need saving them? I... It cannot be a lack of resources. Lord Pelair is fooling everyone with that. Indeed, it is not. But my lips are sealed. Only know that they are needed urgently. I will require your help, however. I've learned of something recently. A method that may expedite their arrival. I am all ears, my lord. I finally pinpointed their location. A trusted source has found the savior. They reside on a planet called Earth. I've never heard of it. For a very specific reason, Envy. 
Earth is not connected to any other world. It is what I call untouched world. Such a thing exists? Only when you have something to hide, or in this case, something to shelter. How can I help? It seems Earth is beyond anyone's reach. I am happy to assist, but I seem unable to. Gladly, that is not the case. That trusted source I mentioned earlier. They've come up with a means to reach Earth. A means to retrieve the Savior. Retrieve, my lord? Yes, like a thief in the night. And this task will fall solely to you. There is no one else I can trust. I am honored. What must be done? You must perform a ritual. Okay. This is getting... Interesting. Hmm. Could this trusted source be the mysterious man from earlier? And is the savior... Me? It's kind of obvious that it is. Yeah. So, anyways. Keela and I remain frozen in fear. We watch in horror as the TV displays a gruesome image. We see a body bag being loaded into an ambulance. It drives away without its siren wailing. That means... No, it can't be. It just can't. Suddenly, everything seems to come crashing down. There would be no more world tour. Would we be sent back home? Would we become sort, sort of media hotshots? Kila's jaw appears inches away from the floor. I can tell he's fighting off tears with fervent effort. I... but... it... seems to be unable to form a coherent sentence. She should comfort him and... I can't move. I know this feeling right now. I've experienced it several times today. On the train ride here, I'm about to be visited by him. Hello again. Can I have your scarf? I know it's all torn and worn, but I actually would like a scarf like that. It's an interesting thing, isn't it? Life is such a frail force, while death is infinitely more powerful. Some would hope it's the other way around. To you watch your world fade away, like a small fly being swatted on the wall. Just like that. Someone can die. No one is above death, just as no one is below life. I've had enough of his cryptic speeches. I deserve some answers, and I'll make that very clear. Thankfully, I'm able to move and speak again. You want answers? What is an answer, exactly? The doorway to more questions, perhaps. Now he's just getting pretentious. But I sense some nervousness. Is he worried about something? It's like he's trying to stall. Oh, I did promise you answers. But I cannot suspend this place for long. Please, come with me to the Ark. Suspend? You'll have to grab my hand. Connections required. Do this. But what about the first time? I spent a moment thinking before I... Come on now, grab my hand. When the suspension ends, you'll be trapped. You'll want to know what happens then. I reached out and grabbed his hand. I had no idea what he was planning, but I trusted him. Especially if he was going to give me some answers. I couldn't disobey him on the verge of the truth. To give him power and to give me a power like he implied he did, he had to trust me as well. This might hurt a little bit. He smirks at me as he snaps his fingers. This time using his free hand. Then we're in the ark. Just like that. First and foremost, allow me to apologize. I feel as though you may be overwhelmed. It's not like me to take things so fast. But recently, matters have become urgent. Furthermore, I will give you answers. I feel like you deserve that much. You are thrust into unusual circumstances. So I welcome you once more to the Ark. A place where you can relax and ponder place where you can collect yourself. Only a select few are allowed entry here. Those that I trust with my life. 
but not only that, the lives of many. And you are the first in a very long time. So, you are free to relax. No danger will befall you here. Not as long as you are by my side. He inches closer to me, as if my safety increases with his proximity. So about these answers you requested, I am willing to provide you with them, but I'll only answer one question. There are more important matters in here. I would like it if you thought carefully. I will not be vague or hide the truth, so make sure you ask what you truly want. You deserve after what you experienced. There are far larger issues at hand. I fear the death of place is unimportant. Unimportant? Well, that's an insult for sure. Especially when someone just lost their life. But it's probably unwise to vocally contest them. Instead, I stop and think of what I should ask. Only one question? That's hardly fair. It was a veritable mountain of them in my mind. I think about today was an enigma. And much of it fell into the realm of the supernatural. I can't expect me to find closure from one question. Unless that was the point. The ability to bend into reality to my will is testing me. There had to be a way to get all the answers and still adhere to this rule of one question. If it's true, I can easily accomplish that. Yeah, I think we have our answer as to how we can do that. All I have to do is load the game to before I asked the question. That's literally all I have to do. Okay. You won't always have the ability to ask every question. Okay. Well, I think the one I'm going to ask... Honestly, I can reload the game and ask every question. Which I think is what I'm going to do. Just return to the main menu and come back to get these questions answered. So, let's go ahead and do that. What is the Ark? I decided to ask him what the Ark is. I mean, that's the first thing that came to mind. There has to be some sort of explanation. Anything can make this place less weird. Interesting choice. But I'm not sure what to say. Hard to explain in a way you'd understand. I don't mean to belittle your intelligence. It would just be a very foreign concept. Hmm. It takes a few moments to think. Is it really that hard to explain? I look around once more and decide that it probably is. I appear to be frozen in space, yet I can move. Not only that, but I can speak in here as well. With everything I've been taught, that's impossible. There is more to Earth than you realize. Or the rest of the planets, for that matter. Your current understanding is limited. You think a physical spot is absolute. No two things can exist in the same spot. But this is not the case at all. Many things exist in the same spot as Earth. Right there, existing alongside you. But at the same time, impossible to touch. There are many worlds that share this space. In fact, there are an infinite number. Each inhabited its own astral plane. Some of those planes are even empty, but many are home to wonderful worlds. The Ark is simply one of these places. Every plane has its own laws. They all work in different ways. Their flow of time is even different. The Ark exists in a very special place. Normally, space is a void of nothingness. Here, we can navigate and speak. Quite simple, really. Simple, huh? The arc is special for another reason. The flow of time here is almost non-existent. Time moves rather fast on Earth. To come to a place like this, well, you'd be near immortal. That is why I've made the arc my home. I have all the time in the world here. We are to achieve all of my goals. That, and I'm kind of bound here. And that does n not touch on your question. I'm afraid that's all the time I have. I hope you were satisfied with my answer. Truthfully, it was all a little much to take in. But in spite of the recent events, I feel alive. Before I know he was vague and dodgy. Question. Let's go back to the main menu. So I can ask the other three questions. I know it doesn't really matter, but to be honest, I want it. So, to understand, basically, the answer to the first question is... The Ark is a place in which time is 
stands pretty much at a standstill. Space can be navigated, and it exists between the other planes of existence, so we can easily transition between them. Okay, that's fair enough. So, then, who are you exactly? I have to know who this man is. It makes the most sense to ask this question. You must know who I am since he gave me this power. But here I stand, knowing nothing about it. You want to know who I am? My, that is a vague question. How do you find an identity? Is it a name? Past? One's actions? Is it a personality? Or an appearance? Well, if, if al almost any of those are true, you have a good idea of who I am. So you're prowling after a name. Perhaps a past, of which you will learn only one. Where do I start? There are many who call the Ark my home. There are few who know the real truth. The Ark is my prison. I've been trapped here for, well, I lost count of a thousand years. But I've been here way longer than that. Though, if I could be honest with you, it feels like only seconds have passed. Time to lose its importance, you know, especially when you're not victim to it. Back at home, I would cherish every second. But here, time remains almost frozen. I don't even know what year it is. I can't tell when it's a day, nor can I tell when night has come. Yes. This is a method of torture. Temporal deprivation, they call it. I am able to leave for short periods of time. Even this is another method of torture. Small taste of home. Brutally torn away. I try not to use that power. It only serves to mock what I'm missing. I must be boring you with this tale of woe. Now me explain more relevant things. You may wonder why this is my prison. Well, I inherited substantial power. Far more than anyone would call normal. In fact, I'm a threat to the universe. However, you did not ask about this power. I feel I've shared enough about myself. I'm afraid that's all the time I have. I hope you satisfy me. So, truthfully, it was a all a little much to take in. This events, I feel relaxed. Okay. So. To understand it, he gained substantial power and then was trapped there for some reason to stop him from using it, if I'm understanding that right. I mean, it sounds about right, from what he said. Okay. Let's find out more about my power. Yes, the burning question of mine. Why me? There had to be a better candidate. Surely there were those more studious and capable. And what exactly was it? Where did it come from? Where did this power come from? I don't think that question has an answer. It simply moves from one host to another, epoch after epoch. No one knows why. We don't know its origin either. Though yes, I am the current host. I was placed here for containment purposes, in the hope that its spread would stop. But now, I'm straying off topic. This power is, well, let me think. I have to word my explanation carefully. There are an infinite number of planes. Each astral plane has many things. It can have similar worlds, or different. You would call them parallel realities. So yes, there is more than one Earth, each having differences, small and large, as well as there being multiple arcs, even though it shares Earth's physical spot. I am lost. <laughs> yeah, I actually am. Think of it like this. Oh, Earth is on one layer. The arc is on another. They both share the same physical spot, but they exist on different outer planes. They cannot see or interact with each other. Okay. The layers separate. Let's focus on the layer you are from. This layer itself has multiple realities. An infinite amount of Earths exist here. Each version of the Earth is different. In either very small or very large ways. This can be as minor as what you've eaten, or as large as the governing superpower. The power that I have given to you, it doesn't really alter reality. You can travel to the world you desire. Some will call you a slider. You can navigate this layer in many ways. But if you're stuck, you are free. A slider. And that is why the power is so dangerous. You could repeatedly destroy worlds. But it can throw the universe into disarray. This throws off the balance of layers, not only for the layer you live in, but of all the surrounding layers as well. Of course, you only have a fraction of this. 
I was unable to give you my full power. But now that you're in the R, you've broken into another astral plane. There are even more realities to play with. It's running why I chose you. As the power grew within me, it evolved. Or perhaps I achieved a greater promise. It beckoned to be gifted to other people. But not just any other person. I had to choose very carefully. For a moment, let us lessen our skill. You'll focus on only your earthling. Push aside everything I've just said. The universe is vast. A large galactic community is at play. There are many trade routes between worlds. Many planets open themselves to immigration. Many planets are hostile. Many planets are friendly. But the heart of the matter is, every planet is connected in some way. Except for Earth. You inhabit an untouched planet. I hope this doesn't offend you. But if you were to go rogue with the power, only Earth would suffer. Only that layer. I had to choose a resident of Earth. It will contain any possible damage. Kind of like the Ark does for me. Whereas of any other planet, all the damage could be substantial. So Earth is lucky in that regard, but it's also special in its loneliness. I apologize if I didn't make much sense. I am still learning the correct terms. Planes, realities, universes. But I did not specifically choose you. My goal was to choose an Earth. I am happy with my choice, however. I hope that you can master this power. Many worlds will want to seek your aid. We can save them and their realities. We can guide them away from disaster. Guide them towards the true history. And I'm afraid that's all the time we have. Really, all the time we have. Okay, well actually, yeah, it really is. Unfortunately, I'm actually out of time. So we'll have to save the answer to the last question until next time. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And hopefully next time around, we'll be able to finally move on to chapter 2. So, until then, see us.